Yo, how's it going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now we just finished watching UFC 295 and this card was absolutely insane. Yesterday we did a predictions video and we went three for two. All right, we got three out of the fights in the main card, right? We got two wrongs, but you know, uh, stuff happens, you know. Uh, let's first start off with Diego Lopez versus Pat Sabatini. Diego Lopez gets a knockout, a TKO win in uh, the fourth minute of the first round. And let me just say, guys, I feel like Diego Lopez is already a star in the UFC. Now, with only three fights in the UFC, I definitely believe that Diego Lopez is a fighter that deserves to be under the bright lights. There's no doubt about it. In the predictions video, we mentioned that Diego Lopez is a fighter that's taller for his division. He is also a fighter that lands, but also absorbs a lot of punishment. Uh, and that was a little evident in this fight as well. We saw him uh, get hit with them a couple clean shots. That kind of worried me a little bit. But nevertheless, Diego Lopez was able to get the job done and get that knockout in the fourth minute of the first round. Now moving on to the Matt Frivola versus the Benoit St. Denis. The God of War got the job done again in the fourth minute of the first round. Benoit St. Denis got a head kick knockout against Matt Fravola. We also got this prediction right on our prediction video yesterday. And it's just crazy to think that Benoit St. Denis is only 27 years old, man. He is only 27 years old. Definitely a real prospect in the lightweight division. I cannot wait to see what he does. He called out Justin Gaethje. He wants that BMF belt. He definitely wants to climb the rankings as fast as possible in order to have the best chances of winning the belt. We also made a video about him a couple months ago talking about him being one of the brightest prospects in the lightweight division. And, you know, that is pretty much just coming into fruition. So the next fight is Jessica Andrade and Mackenzie Dern in the women's strawweight division. It was a little bit of a disappointment i'm not gonna lie we predicted that mackenzie dern was gonna go ahead and take the win but looking into the fight it looked like mackenzie dern kind of regressed in her striking definitely and you do not want to have sloppy striking against someone like jessica andrade who is one of the few women in the women's strawweight division that has enough power to knock women out definitely and mackenzie dern was just out of control in there she looked like Ooh, man, she looked lost in the combinations. I'm not even going to lie. She was also having her head up really, really tall. Uh, she was standing tall in some of her exchanges. And I just felt like it was a lot of sloppy striking. And like I said, Jessica Andrade is one of the few women that will take advantage of the fact. And yeah, Jessica Andrade secures her position in the women's strawweight division. And Mackenzie Dern uh, unfortunately gets the loss. And that was the first fight we got wrong in the predictions. And then we move up to the heavyweight co-main event between Sergei Pavlovich and Tom Aspinall. And let me just say, I had to eat my words here. No doubt about it. Tom Aspinall was in the cage moving around like a light heavyweight. That guy is so big. He has a lot of power. And he just able he's just able to move so fluently in there. Uh, Sergey Pavlovich unfortunately was not able to get any offense done. Tom Aspinall knocks out Sergey Pavlovich in the fourth minute of the first round to secure the interim heavyweight championship. Now the UK has two champions, one being Tom Aspinall and the other fighter who's going to fight in a couple weeks, that being Leon Edwards. No doubt about it, the UK right now should be definitely excited. The future is bright for your country. And now we move on to the main event. The light heavyweight title was on the line. Alex Pereira versus Jiri Prohoshka. The fight went for two rounds. And honestly, I'm be honest with you guys. We were rooting for Alex Pereira here. No doubt about it. Jiri Prohoshka, he's a great fighter. There was moments in the fight where I thought Jiri Prohoshka was doing great things. Unexpectedly right in the striking department he was landing some shots against alex pereira and he was actually backing alex pereira up in some occasions but of course alex pereira having all that experience being a champion 
uh, being also champions in kickboxing, he was just able to be a defensive counterpuncher and find uh, opportunities where he could land in between combinations of Jerry Prochaska's. Now, the biggest controversy here is there's a lot of people right now that believe that fight was stopped prematurely, and I have to agree to some degree. I think that the fight should have gone on for a little bit longer because the stakes are so high. This is not just a regular bout in the light heavyweight division. This is for the gold. This is for all the marbles. This is Yuri Prohaska's comeback, right? And for the fight to be stopped that early, I think it was a crime but nevertheless congratulations to alex pereira he was our final predictions in our predictions video from yesterday and he was able to secure us that three two record of these fight predictions let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below do you guys believe that diego lopez is already a star in this division what about uh benoit saint denise the god of war would you guys like to see him fight someone like Justin Gaethje in the next upcoming year? Mackenzie Dern, she regressed in her striking. Was that a surprise to you guys? Tom Aspinall winning the interim heavyweight champion. Would you guys like to see him fight John Jones? And do you guys believe that the fight between Alex Pereira and Jiri Prohaska was ended too early? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.